you, you are, you are a news best hound. Best At the end of the day, you were former editor of the Sunday Express, my old stable, and OK Magazine. So you know your news onions. What have you chosen for biggest story of the weekend? Um, well, there are several really big stories this weekend, but I, I think the, 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 the whole, for me at the moment, the biggest story is, is still um, the, the disappearance, Nicola. Nicola so. Bully, yeah. yeah. It's, it's two weeks now. The partner went on Channel 5 and basically said he's 100% certain that his girlfriend isn't in this river. And there's a number of different detectives basically questioning the police's approach to this. Mm. Well, I think it's difficult to say that it, 100 percent that she's not in the river for a, for a start off, because I think the, and the points made actually this in one of the stories, I think the one that we have up on the screen there, um, that someone from the RNLI makes the point that, you know, you had these eddies and you had these kind of currents in rivers. And and, you know, if she has fallen in, she could have been pushed all over the place yes. and maybe out to sea. So, you know, I, I don't think it's as simple as just saying she's not in the river. I don't quite know how you yeah. can come to that conclusion. Um, and I do think, actually, in the middle of all this, I think the police have been... Well, I think it's becoming very heated. I think that's one of the problems with it. I completely sympathise with the family about all the speculation on social media, which is not helpful. No, but some it's, of it's but just it's, downright but it's, offensive, But it's something actually. which was obviously going to happen because it's a bona fide mystery. It's beginning to remind me ever so slightly of the Connie, Corrie McKee disappearance, you know, the, the squaddy that fell into the bin and then into the... Yes, um, and that pro prompted uh, similar spe speculation, yeah, all sorts uh, of theories absolutely. about... Absolutely. Only in the sense that, um, you know, and, and I d dearly hope nothing like that's happened to Nikki. I will say that. I hope she's brought home safely. But my, 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 the reason I say it is because the truth is often stranger than fiction, I think, particularly when it comes to people disappearing. And, and that was um, a, a story where, as you say, there was endless speculation. There was idea that he'd run back to Scotland, that he'd had problems at the barracks with mm. this, that and the other, and, you know, run into problems with other squaddies, etc. In the end, it was very, very <laughs> straightforward and awful, he'd, he'd got, got drunk, fallen into a bin yeah. and been loaded into a refuse. I think refuse. The, the family are basically saying, look, you've looked to the river now, can we now extend the search to the fields around? Some of her friends have said that's where she used to typically walk the dog. Yes. Let's just send them our best love and best wishes. I mean, for the two daughters, it's just absolutely it, heartbreaking. It is awful. It is to awful. To not know. It's the not knowing, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. But I think, you know, the important thing is and, and uh, that the family are going to try and keep this going. They've launched a campaign today for everyone to wear these yellow yeah. badges. They want to keep the momentum yeah, of the campaign. Keep it in the press. going and I think that's really important and you know Godspeed bring her back now you've <coughs> chosen as investigation of the weekend this very interesting story about the Tavistock now tell me about this because there'd been concerns about this clinic for some time the whole thing was blown apart because I think there were a number of whistleblowers who said look they're giving these um, uh, very strong hormone blockers to very young children who you know perhaps shouldn't be medicalised in this way. Yeah, this is an interesting story, this, because it's come up off the back of the publication of a book which has uh, been prompted by various clinicians coming forward from this unit, which was at the Tavistock, called the Gender Identity Development Service. Yes. And basically what some of these clinicians are saying is that um, children were given sort of one face-to-face -face sort of, you know, interview with a clinician and then put onto puberty blockers. And they're talking about a 1,000 children being put onto pu After puberty one blockers. Appointment. Yes. And so, so basically what, what it's looking like is a kind of mass... This is why it's been compared to East Germany's doping of athletes. It's become this kind of mass sort of di diagnosis and mass treatment of, of these children. And, and I think where the... There's a huge irony here, a terrible irony here in the sense that you know, with, with transitioning, I mean, obviously, the it's the individual. That's what, is, what it's all about. It's, it's the individual's right to live it, the, the gender that they want to live in. Yeah. So, you know, that's what the whole point of, of transitioning. Here, people are sort of being herded into mm. great groups with, with seemingly very little sort of um, clinical sort of observation or anything like that. And... A lot of those children have suffered from mental illness, were suffering from mental illnesses, yes. had autism. Yeah, I was going to say about the, the author, who incidentally we're having on the show next week, um, she's going to come on and discuss this book, but she has pointed out this link to uh, children with autism being overrepresented in the patient list, which I think is interesting. I mean, what's it saying about the medicalisation of, of kids who might just 
be a bit damaged and need some counselling and some help. Well, it, it, exactly. I mean, the, 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 the problem is that the, the, the need to transition gender is, is seen as, a, the, you know, the sort of the mental illness is seen as the, as the, as the cause of that with a, a, a not sort of one of the symptoms sort yeah. of thing. So they've sort of got it round the wrong way. I mean, my, my problem with it, my father was bipolar. I, you know, sort of campaigned quite a lot on You've bipolar a, illness. award winning book on it. And every single um, bipolar patient is different, you know, so that and, and all of the sort of symptoms that they display are slightly different. You know, obviously, they're high and they're low at different mm. times of the year. Um, but every bipolar is an, is an individual. Everybody that suffers from an autism is individual. Yeah. Everybody that suffers from any kind of mental health problem is an individual. And you'd have thought that they need more than one appointment. Absolutely. To be put on these and this, this herding of people, I just think it's absolutely shameful. Um, you've chosen as exclusive of the weekend, this is on the front page of your old newspaper and mine, um, this interview that um, the Sunday Express has got with James Bulger's brother. Mm. Now, again, that's another story that because it was just so horrific at the time and I, I was very young when it happened but even I remember it and this notion that you know, the family quite rightly I think just won't accept these killers who were children themselves that's mm. why it caused so much controversy being released from prison yeah and I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of sympathy with that I think for me, I, I remember, I think we all remember that the, 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 the sort of crimes taking place. They were so horrendous that they fell into that very special category of evil, I think. Um, and I use the word special, you know, sort of because they're, they're very unique and awful. Yeah. Where I just don't think it's, it's possible to think about redemption. I just feel that, you know, if someone is capable of committing the yeah. terrible crimes that were committed against that three-year-old child back yeah. in 1993. It's the footage, isn't it, of him being taken by the hand in that shopping centre in Bootle. Um, but equally, it's the debate, and funnily enough, later on the Generation Gap, we're going to be talking about Shamima Begum, you know, and whether children can be liable. Legally, you're criminally liable over the age of 10. There are a lot of people who are sympathising with the killers and saying, you know, they didn't know what they were doing. I, I, just, I have three children, Martin. Yes. You've got three children. Kids know what they're doing, age 9 and 10. I, I won't go into the details of that crime, but I think the details of the crime that came out at the time convinced me that they knew exactly what they were doing. And I know that's a terrible thing and, to say and, about and young And one of them, of Venables, has obviously had subsequent um, convictions. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And my view is that they should have gone to prison and they should have stayed in prison. And, and, and you know, I will never shift from that view. And I, I, I feel really really feel for this brother. I think it's a terrific exclusive that the Sunday Express got today. They've yeah. had some great ones over the I years. Know, they've got a new editor there who's and doing well. Exactly. David, David Wooding, Wooding, who's doing extremely well. And I think this is a fantastic story that he's got. And I, and I really feel for the brother because little James would have been 32, 33 now. He, he, the brother has never had the chance to know him. The boy was snatched away. And I just feel if, if you were that man, if you were that brother, you yeah. would think think about that child every single day. And it's and just like terrible, his, actually. And James's parents. Just briefly, Martin, unlikely story of the weekend. I mean, I say it's unlikely because it's this cross-party summit. So there seems to be some astonishment in the Observer that the likes of Michael Gove and David Lammy can get together and discuss Britain's post-Brexit future. I mean, is there anything wrong with that? Well, I have to say, first of all, Michael Gove is actually one of my favourite politicians. I love Michael Gove. I don't know why, I just do, and I've not thought people would disagree with he's, me. Some people think he's an acquired taste, but I, briefly, I, I think he's is a this a good thing? I think he's a proper politician, and I think he does things properly, and I think getting together a cross-party summit on this is a brilliant idea, and I actually wish there were more cross-party summits on far more key issues. NHS, defence spending even, uh, which we'll get onto in just a All moment. All sorts of stuff. Martin Townsend, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Lovely Pleasure. to see you.